lunch, you know what I'm saying? It's going down. Yes, Thomas Sellers Jr. here at the Breaking News Desk with a volleyball update because we're in volleyball postseason. So let's go to Class 2A for our update as we scroll down. The Militant Trojans, that's the team that I cover primarily. They lost a tough one to Covington, so they'll be heading on the road tomorrow at Dyer County for their sectional game. Winner take all, go to state. Covington will host Crockett County in 2A. As we look at 3A, as I get my little nifty up, I feel like I'm doing a weather report with the storms coming through. Um, as I look, and, um, ooh, usual suspect, Houston and Carville. A five-set thriller with Carville coming out on top. Carville will host in their sectional game, and they will host Rossview, and then Clarksville will welcome the Houston Lady Mustangs in 3A action. Let's see how the private schools are doing. As we take a look, um, St. George's. They're still alive and from my area and North Point Christian. My lady Rosemark Rebels took a tough loss heading to Middle Tennessee yesterday. So they're eliminated and they're out. And then 2A, St. Agnes, St. Mary's, they match up on Saturday, October the 14th. And Briarcrest, a usual suspect in volleyball, they host a big game at 2 o'clock against Liston Academy. So that is your update from the breaking news desk. And now we head you to your regular scheduled programming with the JS Report. All right, my take one fall break edition on the JS report. I got recap from last week. Uh, Carville 48, Cordova 14, FACS, Westwood 0. At Fade Academy, got a huge win, region game over TRA, uh, 34 to 12, or 18, I'm sorry. Germantown 44, high scoring game there, Barlett 30. Uh, Houston 48, Arlington 7, Milton 34, Bolton 14. Mufford 55, Brighton 20. North Point 56, St. George's 13. And then East Beat Lakeland, 42-0. That's what take one. All right, my get, we get ahead for this fall break edition. Only a few games to really to talk about because everybody else is enjoying their vacation at the lake or at the river or wherever they're headed. Uh, Trinity plays at FACS in a key region game for Coach Mitch McDaniel and the Crusaders in that game. Could the Crusaders keep on running the football like they've been doing all year? A rivalry game. Christian Mothers at MUS on a Friday night. Surprised those two coaches really didn't get together and say, hey, let's just move this game to a Thursday so they can go enjoy the Tiger game on Friday night. The Memphis Tigers, I might add, on Friday night. Lausanne travels to Mufford up Highway 51. Two great coaching matchups, two great uh, young environment for both players on both sides of football for young both teams. Could the seniors and the juniors for Mufford maybe prevail in that game over Lausanne? We'll never really tell until Friday night after the ball game. ECS travels to University School of Jackson at USJ and a tough region game there. And uh, good luck to all the teams this week on the GS Report for Take Two. Here anyway, we back at the breaking news desk. Well, it's not the breaking news desk, it's just my regular desk. For the top 10 and take three of the GS Report. So we go to the dynamic power 10 of West 10 Media. And we start off with number 10, the TRA Rebels. Took a tough loss. But they'd be at Trinity Christian when the next time they step on the field. Barlett Panthers are at number nine at five and three overall. Got Cordova to try to bounce back after a tough loss to Germantown. Number eight, the Covington Chargers at six and two. Been putting together a nice little winning streak. Big 70 to 12 win over Liberty. Number seven, the FASC, the FASCS Crusaders. <laughs> Always have a tough time saying that they're six and one. People that have been going against the Crusaders have been having a tough time as well. They stump Westwood, but tough challenge against Trinity Christian. The team coming out of Jackson. Number six, 71 Millington Trojans. Um, they're going to enjoy their week off, try to heal up, and then head up to Highway 51 against Brighton on next week. And that should be a good game. Brighton, a nice improving team that's trying to build up something with Coach Keith Settler out there. Number five, the Mumford Cougars at 71. They talked a 
Keith Seller and the, and the Cardinals a little something with a 55 to 20 win over la last Friday. They had lines in this week, and that's why I think I'll be heading up there this week, this Friday, to check out that nice little matchup. And now our top four. Number four, the Houston Mustangs at six and two. Um, White Station is coming up for them. A nice, impressive 48 to seven win over Arlington. The Mustangs, watch out for them. They might finish up in our top two when it's all said and done, and I think they might be preparing for a nice playoff run. Number three, the Carville Dragons at six and two. Three and two in league play, so the next couple games are gonna be crucial. Whitehaven is coming up soon. You need to get that win so you can stay at playoff contention. Number two, MUS Isles at six and one. Big rival gang is Christian Brothers coming up. Christian Brothers has a nice record. So if Christian Brothers can pull off this upset, you should be hearing them in our dynamic power of 10. But the MUS Owls want to put an end to, to their nice momentum. And at number one, the unbeaten 8-0 Germantown Red Devils. Big win over Bartlett. Huge hurdle that they, they had to get over. Now they got Arlington, I think White Station, to close out the year. So they're eyeballing 10-0. and 0. So they can hold on to that number one spot. And that's the dynamic power of 10 as we head into fall break and get ready for the last two games coming up and see how it will shake out. All right, my take four. Guys, he's wearing black this time, I guess, because he's a Houston Mustang now. Coach Robert Roberts is joining me back on the DS Report. Coach, again, thanks for coming back Appreciate on. Appreciate you having me. Coach, you got to see some exciting football the last kind of like two weeks, one for coaching and one for this past week, just enjoying, you know, since y'all played on the Thursday night against Arlington, you got to see some exciting football at Germantown Friday night, which I got a correction to make. Uh, Barlett lost that game 44-20. My apologies to Coach Robinson and the Germantown Red Devils. But just talk about your game against Barlett, first of all, against Houston, and then just talk about the game that you saw against Germantown. Okay, our game against Barlett was a hard-nosed football game. It was, it, was a tough, it was a tough football game. Um, every game in Region 8, and in region, our region uh, eight six A is a tough football game. It's like the SEC West, right. and uh, we knew Bartlett was going to be a tough game. Uh, we we prepared hard for them all week, and uh, you know, luckily things came out our way. You know, you got to see John Johnson up close and uh, up close, and then you got to see Cam Alexander. You got to see. Some players for Barlett, you know, since you're also the linebacker coach and the last special team coordinator for the Houston Mustangs. But it was, the, I know the game plan was probably to stop drawing and probably not give Cam, I'm not saying go through any of your game plan for the rest of the year, the game in general. But the game plan going in was probably to stop drawing and give him like two yards to carry, basically, right? He's a, he's a really, really tough running back. And, and one of our major goals for that game was to stop him. And, uh, I think we did a pretty good job of doing it, except for uh, he, he broke a long one on us the second half. But uh, hats off to our defense. I thought right. our defense played really, really hard and played really well that game. Absolutely. I put pressure on Cam all night long. Like, you can't really give, like, a quarterback like Cam or anybody in this area. Like, you've seen the Aiden Glover up close and personal. Oh, yes. You can't really give those two type quarterbacks all day to throw the football because if you give them all day to throw the football, they can chuck it down 30 yards like – you know, Carver experience, you know, against Barlow at times. But you also got to see your game against Arlington since y'all played against Arlington. Just talk about that game. Uh, the game against Arlington was a Thursday night game, which was kind of unusual and, and right before uh, fall break. But um, Arlington was one of those games that you came into following two big games. We had Tupelo and then Bartlett. And playing a team uh, that's got the athletes that Arlington has, it's scary as a coach, mm -hmm. especially when you got a short week to prepare. Right. It's, you don't know how your kids are going to respond. This time of the year, you're beat up and banged up. And But uh, our kids really played well against Arlington. Mm -hmm. And uh, my hat's off to our kids because our, our kids uh, really showed up and really put out. I know Arlington ain't the same as Arlington used to be, like for us, you know, like back in the day and whatnot. They're rebuilding under Coach Tommy Miller a little bit more in detail this year. But what can you tell your players to quit looking at the, their records, per se, and just focus on the game in general? Well, we haven't had any problem, thank goodness, with our kids okay. uh, regarding that. Uh, we've had such a tough schedule. Uh, you know, we played South Panola and Tupelo mm -hmm. and, you know, Bartlett. And, you know, we, we've played such a tough schedule. Our kids don't. Thank goodness our kids don't look at schedules. Right. 
they look at who we play as the next opponent, which from a coaching standpoint is, is great. That's what you want kids to look at. But uh, that hasn't been a problem for us to this point. Okay. That's a good, that's a good point because, like you said, y'all put that tough schedule together for a reason this year. I like to talk to Coach Thomas. He said, yeah, I think I pulled a kind of like a trick in a way to pull it out, the South Panola schedule, because Barley got to play Hoover last year. And uh, they just got, they got better from it. And I think the South Panola, I know y'all came up short in that game, but South Panola is still South Panola in my book. You know, regarding it was a rebuild for South Panola, they still got the athletes on there. You only lost by two points down, you know, down at Northwest to them. But just putting that game together where y'all just play that game, and, you know, I'm like, this guy's – we'll get them ready for that district schedule with that South Panola game. Then, like you said, that Tupelo game, the number one powerhouse in Mississippi, I, people call it, down in Tupelo where they got D1 players all over the field. And that was just a huge win at home, I might add, too. Going down to the wire where Chandler threw that pass with six seconds to go, that's a huge win to get y'all ready for the postseason, you know, as well. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, my hat's off to Coach Thomas for putting that schedule together. At first we looked at it and thought, Good gracious, what are, we, what, right. what are we in for? But our kids have responded, and they played extremely well. Um, you know, both of those games against uh, uh, South Panola, who, again, is ranked in 6A, and I think I believe they're ranked four in the state in 6A right now in Mississippi. And then the time we played Tupelo, they were ranked number one. So our kids uh, our kids have really responded well. And, and uh, like you said, I, I – my hat's off to Coach Thomas for putting this schedule right. together because it's prepared us for the tough district which we play in. Right. And I just want to say, you know, Andre Allen Jr. has stepped up pretty good for y'all in the absence of a little bit Mr. Jones as well. But I just want to say to from Barley Guy to Houston Guy, congratulate. I know you're Barley alum too. Uh, but congratulations uh, yeah. on that hard fought win against us. And uh, good luck the rest of the way. You talk about that Germantown. You saw Germantown play Barley. What was the – I know the score was a little bit – Misleading at times because it's you know Barley just couldn't get out the field on defense at times. Right. Let's talk about that game where Bar uh, Barley kind of struggled in that game to play like, offensively. Well, I I don't know so much as them struggling as it is Germantown just played great defense. Okay. I mean they've got such a good defensive team, especially their front four. Their 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 front line on on defense is as good as I've seen in years. Absolutely. So I, I don't think it's so much as Bartlett's struggle as it is my hat's off to Germantown because they put, they put a great defensive plan together for Friday night. Um, it, it was, as I expected, a hard-hitting mm -hmm. game. Uh, there were a lot of highlights. As I'm sure you saw that oh, yeah. the kid from Bartlett caught the pass and actually drugs defenders like 20 yards in the end zone. I mean, I mean it was – it was a, a give it all. It, it was just a great high school football game to watch. And uh, I, I think the depth factor became a little bit of a reality too, the second half. But, you know, it's that time of the year where, where the depth factor was we talked about earlier. That's coming into play. And it's a time of year where every team is beat up right now too. So it's uh, – Absolutely. And I also think, you know – the next two weeks for everybody, you know, in our area, including us, y'all, and Carver, well, everybody, Whitehaven, don't count them out, has a lot, you know, don't take nobody for granted for one thing. Two, just always show up for your A game no matter what, and then just keep it all on the field the last two weeks of the regular season because this could very well be your last two weeks of your regular season. Absolutely, and especially in Region 8 6 a. Like I said, I call this the SEC West because that's basically what it is. Every week. In our in our region, you're having to play somebody that's that's going to bring their A game, as you said, and uh, you better have yours, or you're going to be in trouble. And uh, please go out and support the kids this week on their fall break if they are playing games. Uh, thanks for coming on and listening to uh, the JS Report once again this week. For Thomas Sellers, Jonathan Sturgeon, and Coach Robert Umbrister, thanks again, Coach. Thank you for having me. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you soon on the JS Report. Seriously, we still, got, we still call this a breaking news day. Seriously. Okay, we're here with your soccer update as we close out this week's JS report. Um, soccer. Yes, you know who I am. Okay, we got Mumford and Brighton. They're still alive. And soccer picks up next week, Tuesday, October 17th, where they're opening up the regionals, and they'll be heading towards sub-state games that we play October 21st. So we got Brighton and Mumford alive in 2A. 
as we look at 3A brackets, we don't have an update yet. I guess Houston and Carville hadn't really got their information out there, but I think you should expect to see them there. Shh, be quiet. It's <coughs> working. Um, and, and we're still waiting for the updates from Division II single A in soccer as some things still shake out. But basically the point of this is soccer and volleyball is October, so it's time for us to see who's going to be a state champion by the end of the month. By Halloween, somebody will be bringing a gold or silver ball back here to the area and region. Let's hope so. And then football, we can fully concentrate on the month of November with our boys at the gridiron taking care of business and getting ready for their playoff hunt. But then there's no rest here at the breaking news desk because basketball season be queued up. So the Jets report will keep rolling, keep rolling, giving you that information. We'll see you next week.